Welcome. All right, so in a couple of my previous videos, you know, when we had an angle that was in terms of pi, and we had an easier denominator to break up a circle, a lot of times I would graph it. And this one's in fifths, and I don't really want to graph that um, an angle that's broken down in fifths, nor do I want to graph it with negative 17 pi over 5, because that's going to be a lot of extra revolution. So when I'm asking to find the, um, the largest positive and, or sorry, the smallest positive, smallest negative coterminal angle, um, what I want to do first is be able to get this down to its smallest negative angle first. So if it's positive, I want to get it down and make sure it's the smallest positive. And if it's negative, I want to make sure it gets down to its smallest negative. So what I notice is there's a lot of revolutions in here. And what I want to do is I want to keep on adding uh, 2 pi to this so I can get to the smallest negative. So if I add 2 pi once. Now, one thing important is if I add 2 pi to this, all right, I have to get common denominators. So therefore, because that's really 2 pi over 1, so therefore I have to multiply by 5 over 5. So realistically, 2 pi in this case is equivalent to 10 pi over 5. So rather than adding, oh, OK. So when I do that, I get 10 pi over 5. Therefore, when I get that, um, add those together, I get a negative 7 pi over 5. Now, if I was to add a positive 10 pi um, over 5 again, it, my angle would now be positive. So therefore, this is my smallest coterminal angle. Because by adding or subtracting 2 pi, I'm not changing the angle. I'm just taking or adding revolution, taking away revolutions or adding revolutions. So therefore, if I take negative 7 pi over 5 and add 10 pi over, 10 pi over 5 again, which is just like adding 2 pi, I now get my smallest positive coterminal angle. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine your smallest positive and negative coterminal angles. Thanks.